Hello, welcome to another video. What exactly is the average value of a function from one point to another point? Well, it's the same question you would ask if you say, what is the average height of a mountain? Well, you, it's either you just add up several of the heights and divide by the number of um, heights that you took, or you might as well say, okay, I'm going to assume that this is an entire area and I'm going to divide the area by one side, then I'm going to get the height. Remember that area is the same thing as height times the base. So let's say we have a function f of x and that function, when you, prop, when you, when you plot it on a graph, let's say you have the graph of f of x and f of x goes like this and it stops here let's say we go from here to here and this point is the let's say you want to take the average height from this point let's call this point a to this point let's call this point b well we know that it's super high here it's very low here it's also low here it's you have different heights. What will be the average height? We don't know. But one thing you can do is, hey, I'm going to assume that this has an area. And because this is fixed, if I divide the area by one of the sides, which in this case will be the distance from here to here, which is B minus A, I definitely will get a height, which will just be the average of all of these. That will be the height. Okay, and it might be something around here. So we can say that the area we're going to get if we find the entire area under this curve might be the equivalent area if we just found the area of this rectangle. And this height becomes the height of the area. Now, this is what's important. The height at any time of a function when plotted is the value of the function when you read it off of the y-axis. So remember that if you say this is the height of this area, it's basically the value of the function. That's why the height of the area the function has is the value of the function and the average height is the average value of the function. And that's basically what we try to do here. We find the area, which you know is always, yeah, you integrate. Okay, it is the value of the integral of the function, the definite integral between those two points, when you get that area, divided by the horizontal distance, which is the distance from here to here, and you'll be good. Now that you know what we're going to do, try it yourself or just watch the video. Let's get into it. So we're just going to take the definite integral of this function f of x and apply the explanation that I just gave and we'll be good. So first things first, let's find the area. I'm going to name it the area. So the area is the integral of f of x starting from the first point pi over 2 and stopping at 3 pi over 2. That's it. And what is the function? We know that it's going to be the integral from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 of 1 plus sine x squared multiplied by cosine x dx. And in taking this integral, well, you have to recall all your integration techniques that if you notice that you're multiplying two functions, and the derivative of one of them is the other, then you're good. Use u substitution. Okay, so I know that if I differentiate this argument here, it's, it's going to be just cosine x. And cosine x is sitting here, right? So you use u substitution and you're good. So we're going to say let u be equal to 1 plus sine x so that du will be equal to, if I differentiate both sides, I'm going to end up with, um, this is going to be 0 and this would be cosine x, cosine x dx, which is sitting right here. So it means that this is the same thing as du, 
and it means that what I have here, since I said u is one plus sine x, this is just u squared. There is one more thing that needs to be done. Because I have replaced the functions that, I, that were in terms of x with um, u squared and du, it is important to change the boundaries also. So I'm gonna go back here and say that what is u when it is evaluated at pi over two u evaluated at pi over 2 will be equal to 1 plus sine pi over 2, right? And what does that give me? Well, I know that sine pi over 2 is 1. What's 1 plus 1? That gives me 2. Okay, I'm good. Now I go back and I say, what would it be? What is u when it is evaluated at 3 pi over 2? Well, that's going to be 1 plus sine 3 pi over 2 and I know sine 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 gives me 0. So I can clearly say that the area is equal to the integral from, this is the lower bound, which is 2 to 0, of u squared du. That's it. Now, if I integrate this with respect to u, what do I get? This is equal to um, u cubed divided by 3, evaluated from 2 to 0. And what does that give me? That gives me, if I plug in 0 here, it's going to be 0 minus, if I plug in 2 here, it's going to be 2 cubed over 3, that's 8 over 3, and that gives me negative 8 over 3. That's the area. But what am I looking for? I am looking for the average value. So we say that average value is what I call the average height. Okay, that's how I like to do it. So this is where it gets um, tricky. When you have this minus a, which is the area over three, remember it is the area divided by the distance you cover horizontally, you use, go back here. I know that I have used zero to two. Now, do not use zero to two because this has changed the shape of what provided the area is just equivalent because we did a substitution. So make sure you stick to this as the horizontal distance, okay? It is B minus A. And then this is gonna be three pi over two, and then this is gonna be um, pi over two. So what's that? That's gonna be divided by 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2. It looks like here we got minus 8 over 3 divided by, what would this be? Let's put the number here. 3 pi over 2 minus 1 pi over 2, that's 2 pi over 2, which is just pi, divided by pi. This gives us minus 8 over 3 pi, minus 8 over 3 pi. Hmm doesn't look as nice as I expected, but that is the average value of this function. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.